Hello, we'll show the video in just a few seconds. I'm Dr. David Baxley of Atlanta, Texas, and I'm the media representative and the official spokesperson for Hassler Evangelistic Ministries. What you're about to see is Leroy Hassler, CEO of Hassler Ministries, and Richard Jones, pastor of Calvary Baptist Church, being interviewed by Rachel Rice on the Outlook television program. You'll hear some exciting news about what God is doing through Hassler Ministries' work in Africa. I'm personally excited about the work because I've worked with Brother Leroy and Hassler Ministries in Zambia, South Africa, and have seen thousands of people come to Christ. I'm also the pastor of the New Hope Baptist Church in Bloomberg, Texas, where Brother Hassler has preached many times. Now, here's Brother Hassler. Oh, I'm so glad you joined us today on Outlook because we're excited about what we're going to share with you. I've got two fabulous guests that have been on mission trips around the world. But beyond that, the message of Jesus that saves us and delivers us and gives us life is what the important ingredient is in today. And we're talking especially about Africa. So I want you to meet uh, missionary Leroy Hafner. That's not Hafner, that's Hassler. Hassler. Yes, now then you've got the name right as well as me. And uh, I, he has been to 20 countries, been in the ministry for years, and loves the Lord with all his heart. And then you may already know our other guest, Pastor Richard Jones from Calvary Baptist Church, right here. Thank you for coming. Thank My pleasure. You. And you all have known each other quite a while. Mm -hmm. Over 30 years. 30 years. Well, then you know a lot to tell. <laughs> Why well, don't you I'll, tell I'll, us I'll a little bit about side. Pastor Hassler? Well, we've, uh, we've known each other. I <clears throat> grew up here in the area and served at Calvary when I was in college and then uh, came back here in 1988 to pastor and Leroy and I reconnected, and uh, we've had him preach at Calvary several times, and we've been involved in supporting the ministry from time to time, and I've just always enjoyed his fervor uh, for reaching the law, especially in Africa and overseas. Mm -hmm. And I was impressed that he had a vision or a goal of seeing two million people come to Christ, and he can share that in just a moment. But uh, Leroy and Ann have been married 47 years. They live in Gladewater, and uh, he's a neat guy. God's really blessed him and anointed him. That sounds pretty good. Well, We've gotten to meet each other way back there, but I'm glad to reconnect. So you're just back from Zambia, aren't you? Didn't you go to Zambia in October? Yeah, we, we had a project in Zambia. I wasn't there personally. Somebody else saw oh, it for I me. I but... see. Well, I misread your communique. I was so excited because I've been to Zambia, and I left a piece of my heart there. And uh, when I realized that you have shown the Jesus film 700 times and had such an outpouring of decisions and people coming to Christ. I was so thrilled then to read all the other things. If I recall, you've been in 20 countries. Yes, ma'am. And uh, done all kinds of exciting things beyond just crusades. Yeah. Building churches, yeah. for instance. And uh, what... Tell us a little bit about your early life and how it came to where you are now. Well, basically, God brought about a revival in my life when I was 27. For, for years, I had uh, no assurance of salvation. I had he so did. much pride, I wouldn't ask anybody about it. And driving away from church one day in Georgia, yeah. God just reassured me that I was His. If I wanted to keep living in doubt, I could. I, I needed to make a choice, and I chose just to believe and trust Him. Did you hear what he said? He could live in doubt the rest of his life, but he made a choice. And that's where it is. We make choices, yeah. don't we? And our lives change. And that's so thrilling. And what happened after that? Well, after that, we moved to South Alabama, to Dothan, Alabama, and got in a very warm church there, a warm Baptist church. And 
God almost simultaneously brought about a tremendous spiritual awakening in my life, my wife's life. We both got uh, greatly concerned about witnessing, winning people to Christ. I went out some, I never have told this publicly, went out some 90 days in a row on visitation. I couldn't wait for our church visitation, so I just <laughs> established my own. <laughs> so you got your own door knocking company yeah. together. I knocked on doors there that actually had pain embedded in my knuckles. Oh my goodness. Oh. I've heard about knocking. Didn't on they have the... doorbells? <laughs> uh, some did. All right. <laughs> I remember uh, we used to go door knocking, and you can meet such wonderful yeah. people. Uh, we still door knock some, but not in an organized way. Um, and I think everybody ought to be eager to share their faith. One day I woke up to the fact that. It's not the Lord's goodness that's keeping me from sharing. Yeah. It's my own, as you put it, doubt and fear. Yeah. And that's not from God, is it? No. It's not. <clears throat> I always call it, uh, people need to look every day for a divine appointment. And I basically is described as we have a gracious God and we have seeking sinners. Yes. But the missing link is a willing witness. And if we can take, if we can be that willing <clears throat> witness, and connect this gracious God to this seeking sinner like Philip did mm -hmm. with the eunuch, mm -hmm. uh, that's a divine appointment. Mm -hmm. and I believe God has those for us more often, but we just don't look for them. Mm -hmm. You know, He's gracious and they're seeking, but many times we as Christians, we're not too willing. And you know, really <coughs> in the church, um, I'm, I'm saying the larger uh, church, not, not yeah. any specific denomination or, or um, company of believers, but predominantly in the church, as most people think of the church, we have not seen God as good on this side of the cross. Yeah. We've seen him not as a gracious God or a good mm -hmm. God, but we've seen him as a God ready to get us when we did anything wrong. And that needs to be broken down because we don't see any of that in Jesus or even the book of James. It says every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from heaven yeah. to us. Well, I was curious, Leroy, when you go overseas, <clears throat> how receptive are the people to the gospel and how easy it is to get into the schools as compared to America? They're unbelievably receptive. Uh, like here yes. in America, I used to do the schools years ago and oh. that door was shut on me in the late 70s. But in Africa, the door was wide open. We that actually have written permission from the... Nation of Zambia, our ministry, it, the Haskell ministry is, is the official spokesperson to the schools mm -hmm. in Zambia, and no school can turn us down. How they about can't get that? in any school here, but they can't turn us down there. It, it's been since, I think, 96 or 97 since I was in Zambia. Yeah. But they put the scripture in their newspapers then. Do they still do that? They're all over the walls of schools. And they get... Mm. Uh, Right before I went on that mission trip, the president gave the nation to Jesus publicly uh, from the legislature and by proclamation and declaration. And uh, just exactly as our nation was given to God on the banks when the people got off the Mayflower. Mm. Our nation, they put a cross in the sand, bowed their head and gave this nation, not to God, but to Jesus. You can look it up in the Mayflower Compact. Yeah. And so Israel was God's people, yeah. chosen nation. America has a covenant with God. And Zambia has a covenant with God. And now Uganda does. Uh, their president and president's wife are absolutely zealous, zealous How people. big is Zambia? It, it's about the size of Texas and has about 20, 22, 23 million people. And what's the dominant religion there? Uh, Is it Muslim? Or? No, it's not. Muslims there, don't have a foothold there. It's uh, what we call animism or yes, worshiping spirits. Uh -huh. Just uh, more or less, they have still a lot of witch doctors yeah. and things like that. And out in the bush where the message hadn't gone. So who are some of the local people that have been able to work with Hassler Ministries? Well, Eddie Knapp's here in Longview House. He's since started his own ministry, Jericho oh, yes. Road Ministry, and uh, 
Ed Hulsey, who's a member at Mobley, and Jerry Ritchie, who's a member at Mobley, and uh, Jim Kistner, who's a member at Mobley, and Bill Langley down at Tyler has worked with me, as well as Randall mm -hmm. Jenkins and Justin Jenkins, his son, and Chad Bixler from uh, Rudd. So you have a whole grouping I'm of not sure how many East people Texas <laughs> people that are yeah. involved in Hassler Ministries. I have a guy from Tennessee that works with me, been working with me since 2003. He's over there right now. Uh huh. So, um, I noticed uh, also that you attend Moberly. Yes, ma'am. And that's, that's awesome. It's a marvelous church, too. Uh, I wanted to also note that um, give us the goal of your ministry. Well, back in 94, uh, God met with in a powerful way. And I was and during my daily Bible reading and study time. Two meetings, really. First of all, he said, I want you to go to Russia in March. Did he? And you heard him? Yeah, not out loud, but in my heart. Uh -huh. It's just clear as, as I'm talking to you. Uh -huh. He didn't ask me if I thought that'd be a good idea or if it was convenient or I had the money, which I did. And he just said, I want you to go. And I uh -huh. just said, yes, Lord. And during a difficult period, because my wife severely broke her ankle and I was having to stay with her. I wasn't even traveling at all then. But anyway, God worked it out, provided the money, and I went. Wasn't long after that, God spoke to me and said, I want to use you to reach two million people over the next 20 years. This was about 94. And uh, <clears throat> again, I just said, yes, Lord. I didn't argue or question anything else. I didn't know how that come about, but I made the commitment. And then things started, started fitting together. I have a friend that doesn't ever make a mission trip unless he's got all the money and everything together. Everyone we make just about, we get committed beforehand and the rest of the details work out later. <laughs> You're kind of, you're kind of like uh, women do when they make bread. Yeah. They get all the ingredients and then they uh, work with it, work with it, and yeah. knead it, and then it just starts rising on its own. In 1993, we went to Columbia. My wife, I felt like she needed to go with me every day. She'd uh -huh. come and say, "Has the money come in yet?" I said, no, it's coming in, no women concerned about details. Yes, we like and, security. Uh, <laughs> but a week before we were supposed to leave, she said, is it coming yet? I said, no, it hadn't come in, but it's coming. About three days before, she says, is it coming in yet? I said, no, but it's coming. <laughs> and a businessman in another city called and said, I got a check for $2,500 laying on my desk. He said, you want me to put it in the mail? I said, no, sir, please don't. I'll come get it right now. <laughs> and you, should also, have, you should have sent her to get it. <laughs> Also, uh, overnight express idea. mail came in from Alabama with, with six hundred more dollars. We needed three thousand. We had thirty one hundred. Uh, so that took uh, care of that. Good, good, good. I know Pastor Richard hears the Lord's voice very clearly. We've we've been able to share some. I think it's the number one thing that Christians are eager to have happen to them. There's when Christians hear the Lord's voice clearly. It does something for us, nothing yeah. else will do. And I can tell you have the gift of faith. Yeah. God, God just God, enables God you to that. believe without any problem. And that is so wonderful. Uh, tell us how that makes you feel when you hear God's voice. Well, it, it's overwhelming. Usually it's a very still, quiet thing. And uh, God speaks to those who will obey. He won't tell somebody something he knows they're not going to obey. I mean, the more you obey, the more light you get, the more that comes in. If you don't obey, you have to go back to that point where you disobey and start over. Well, the fun is in doing it, isn't it? Yeah. That's where the, the blessing is, faith is in doing Faith always involves action. Right. Sir? I said faith always involves action. If you believe you do, start yeah. working toward that, don't you? And uh, what what would you think? Well... To me, the whole there's two keys to the Christian life. Uh, one is is obedience. You have to have obedience. And the don't you one, think he puts that in us to well, want to do it with him and for him? If you're willing, there's a lot of you know. Why why would we have such a a difficult time in America getting the gospel out when so many Christians say they believe in the Bible, they believe in prayer, and they believe in God? But look what happened to our nation. We have Christians that will not obey just the basics. And then the other part of Christianity is love. You yeah. take love out of your life, <clears throat> you won't have a burden. Uh, you won't have this uh, zeal 
to serve God because you have this burden that you love people, you love souls. And you know, we're living in the last days and uh, the church needs to wake up. And the only way most churches are going to wake up is it's got to start with leadership. We've got people in the pulpits that aren't preaching the gospel. They're not uh, challenging the people. And our churches are just <sighs> going to sleep. <laughs> and we need to wake up. Well, uh, I think for my own experience, yeah. <clears throat> I have, when I've suddenly realized how much the Lord loves me, that has motivated me. When I've realized that, well, maybe I could put it this way. One day I was reading along 1 Corinthians uh, 11, 12, and 13, and the love chapter right, you know, right there in the middle. Yeah. And I suddenly saw I can't love either myself or the Lord like that. I, I can't. I can't love like that. And it was like the Lord spoke to my heart and He said, that's the way I love you. And when I realized He loved me that way, if you really love someone, the, the want to, to go serve Him right. comes forth. And I think a lot of people uh, may be stuck in thinking God's still going to get them mm -hmm. instead of God loves them. And yet, a lot of us also don't realize that's His grace working in us. Yeah. Don't you think so? Yeah, every command in the Word of God is meant to be obeyed in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not something we're, we're supposed to do in our, in our flesh. Most people don't understand that. I agree. That. I agree. Because we can think it through and do the right thing with the wrong heart. Mm -hmm. mm. And I've, <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> you, you, know, you mentioned the love chapter in 1 Corinthians 13. And every time the word love is used, just put Jesus where it is. And That's he, good. He matches all that. And then, guys, every time I do a wedding, I read that. And I'm always convicted, what if I put my name where all that oh. is? And I can't get past the first two or three. Oh. Uh, but that's, that's what motivates us is love. Oh. The Bible says, how will the world know that we're His disciples? By going to church? By doing good stuff? No. By the love we have for one another. It's got to start with Christians first, and then it spreads. And, the world and this is what I've been impressed with, Leroy, with the vision and the commitment of going overseas where the harvest is ripe and people respond. Mm -hmm. I just had a missionary tell me that's in Guatemala. They were going to do some vacation Bible schools, and they didn't have places to meet, so they went to the schools. Can we use your facility after school to have a vacation Bible school? Well, the Guatemalan principal says, what's vacation Bible school? And the guy told him, he says, no, you can't use it after school. Do it during school. For everybody. And they How had, about that? They had 500 professions of faith in these How schools. And, and uh, I thought that was neat. They wanted to use it afterward. And the principal said, that sounds good enough. Let's do it during, during school. And isn't that thrilling? Yeah. And everything. It's like popcorn. You got a kernel, and all of a sudden you got a big one. And that's good. Where are you in your commission that the Lord gave you for two million? We've now raised over a million eight hundred thousand. I don't have the exact figure with me. Uh, a million eight hundred thousand. How about that? It's one point eight something, but that's uh, it's getting close. It's getting close. And you got three years, didn't you say? In twenty years? Yeah, probably in the next year or two we'll reach it. We've reached. Over 300,000 this year. That's the first time we've done that for, for nine consecutive years in a row now. We've reached over 100,000 people. And I say we, I'm talking about what God's doing through this ministry. I, I've done nothing but abandon myself to Him and trust Him. Amen. Amen. And that's adventure and excitement and thrilling. And, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, my. To see things happen that you never dreamed would happen is just, that's what every heart wants, isn't it? Every heart wants that for themselves and for their children because it makes life so special. I want you all to know that uh, Brother Hassler has written a fabulous book. And if you want to call, contact or call Outlook on our prayer line, uh, we'll put you in touch with him. You'll find his website in our credits. Um, I want you to be a aware that the title is Go, Obeying God in World Evangelism and Revival. And uh, Leroy Hassler has a church planting 
mission, and he's also an evangelist, if you hadn't figured that out by now. And um, I just am thrilled because the book gives so many instances and personal experiences in different countries. So keep in mind, go and contact Outlook or Hassler Ministries uh, if you'd like to know more about World Revival. When I get into heaven, I've already asked for a flock of giraffes, and I see that's on your cover. I just think they're the most fascinating. Well, when you get to heaven, you've asked I, for a for, flock. How of how giraffes. would you say it? Herd, I guess. Yeah. Would it be a herd? Be a herd. A herd. <laughs> I, I took that photo in Kenya, by the way. Did you? Uh, I went to Tyler to the zoo, the Caldwell Zoo, and a mama had a baby, and he was eight feet tall. And I just couldn't believe it. And they are so precious. I just love giraffes and camels. I like camels. A giraffe can't hide because he's so so tall. <laughs> Isn't it neat? God just has the best sense of humor. Uh, what are your plans for the future? Have you got any conferences going into other countries right away on your schedule? Uh, we'll continue doing Malawi and Zambia even after we reach that goal. We may start going in some more out of the way, harder to reach places and uh, put, put more emphasis on starting new churches mm -hmm. once we do that. We mm -hmm. do anywhere from three or four to, to six crusades a year overseas. I wanted to share with you this communique I had gotten from the mission um, effort and evangelistic crusade in Zambia. Uh, Ndola is one of my favorite places, as you know. And um, you had 82,379 yes, decisions for Christ. One new church was started. And in this crusade, 112 times the gospel was preached by four teams. And uh, that was 39,714 decisions. And you went into 70 schools and gave away 600 Bibles. Yeah. And uh, the Jesus film was shown 40 times. And uh, you had an opportunity to receive Jesus in that. Yeah. And after that, 42,665 people came to the Lord. We're able to preach the gospel on it's so and give, free. A, give an invitation in the school. Yes. And, and no and restrictions whatsoever put on us. Se this is what I liked. Yeah. 75 soccer balls were given away. When I was in Zambia, they were so poor. You saw almost no dogs because they couldn't feed them. And the children had wrapped up old rags with twine for soccer balls. Nandola is one of the poorest areas. Yes. I wanted them to have soccer balls. We do that in yes. a goodwill gesture, too. Yes. And uh, uh, it was just really, really something to see the toys that were made yeah. out of coat hangers, the cleverness and the um, creativeness. Uh, little bitty bicycles were made about this size, and then they'd take another coat hanger and make it into a long rod, and they made it where the front wheel would turn, and the little handlebars, and it had a little niche where you could stick the long rod. And then out in the middle of the street where the paving was packed down, they could run this little bicycle by remote control on this long rod. And it was, it, your heart went out to the people. And um, they have such a loving heart. Yeah. But when they would praise the Lord, they did it with everything in them. Hasn't that been your experience? Yes, and the, the children, or the school children, whether they're college age, junior high, whatever, they're very polite. It's always, yes sir, no sir, can I help carry your things? Yes. Can I open the door for you? What can we do for you? You don't have any... Discipline problems speak up in schools, violence almost unheard mm -hmm. of every day starting the schools, usually with Bible reading and prayer. Mm. That's the way they start off their school days, and like that's, we used to. That's huh? back like America used to yeah. do. Mm -hmm. We have been so available 
to be tolerant of any and every yeah. thing that would come in. It has caused uh, dividing, hasn't it? Well, you can see statistically in the early 60s when prayer and Bible was uh, removed from the schools that academics has gone down and violent crime has skyrocketed. You know, when I was in school, uh, if you didn't tuck in your shirt tail or if you chewed gum or you ran in the hall, you were a bad news guy. Now it's extortion, murder, rape, everything imaginable in the schools. They have dogs, metal detectors, and someone said, uh, you take the Ten Commandments out of the school and uh, uh, they're going to start acting like animals, and that's true. But down in India, the same way when we would preach in the schools, the kids would sit for hours before we'd get there, perfectly still, real close together on the floor. And they would just listen and respond, and they were so obedient and very responsive to the gospel. Because people are longing for something. And yes. when that, that something is a someone. And when we present the gospel, how they can have their sins forgiven, and how they can know God and go to heaven when they, when they die, uh, people are very responsive. And the hearts change, and when the heart changes, their action changes, and that is so... Speaking of changing, this need. will be on afterwards, but uh, the time change is coming up this weekend. Yes. And I put out on my marquee, time change, but let God change you. Amen. <laughs> so they'll that's get this good. after that's happened, but anyway. I just... We're going to uh, kind of wrap this up. Is there anything that you want to challenge us with this morning? I want to challenge anybody that's listening to pray more for missions, get more involved. There's nothing everybody can do. I want, if you've never been saved, I want you to consider giving your life to Christ today. He died for you. He loves, he loves you. You need to invite him into your life and ask him not to be a part of your life, but to be the Lord of your life or to take over your life. And he'll start talking to you like he did yeah. you, won't he? He yeah. will. He's closer. Well, actually, he gives you every breath you breathe. And that is so thrilling. Every breath we breathe is just because he loves us. And he wants the best for us. I think uh, mission trips, I've been privileged to take several. And it will change outlook. Yeah. It'll make us thankful for what That's we right. have. Right. They do so much with so little. They do. Yeah. A box of crayons in Honduras just thrilled the kids that they had a box of crayons. Oh, uh, one of the things that I came home thankful from, uh, Japan was just hot and cold water. Yeah. Just hot and cold water. And then from Mexico, a bathroom. A, a bathroom that's inside. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but you know, God loves people. And he has a plan for every single one of their lives. And he wants us to share his goodness. Brother Richard, I'm so glad you got to come. Is there something you want to add as well? Well, I would, I would say amen to what Leroy said. Uh, having a personal relationship with Christ is the most important thing. Not, having, not having a mental assent about God, yes. but having that intimate uh, relationship through accepting him yes. will change your life. I've, I've never gotten over my salvation. Oh, I mean. good. We don't need to. No. And listen, I want to remind you again of the book. If you would like a copy, please contact Outlook or get in touch with um, LeroyHasslerMinistries.com and you will find our websites. I also, because we're talking about God's love today, want to remind you if you haven't gotten on Outlook's website, it's outlookcable.com. Right there on the front page, read about how God loves you from the Scripture. Right Zephaniah 317. Do you know if you receive Jesus, just like Leroy Hassler is sharing with the world, if you receive him, do you know that in heaven they sing and dance over you? He doesn't even bring up your sins. He loves you so much. And with that, we just want you to know that God has a destiny and good things for you. Haven't you enjoyed today? And be praying for Hassler Ministries. And with that, we say God bless you. And that's it.